Upgraded or larger brake rotors will not reduce your stopping distance, but using wider tyres will. Now that might come as a surprise to most people, but it's true, and I want to explain why. But I also want to explain that no matter how good your brakes or tyres are, there is one other limiting factor, and most people completely overlook it. This is a GCN Tech nerdy science video, and if you're new here and love bike tech, then it's well worth subscribing to our channel. Now, if you've ever thought about upgrading the brakes of your bike and conducted even the most basic of searches online, you'll probably be led to believe that going for larger brake rotors, bigger brake calipers, and upgraded performance brake pads is the way to go. And whilst that is true to some extent, it's not the major limiting factor affecting your rate of deceleration. The most important thing is the grip that your tires have with the road, which means it's kind of pointless upgrading your brakes without optimizing your tires first. Now you'll be pleased to hear that I'm not about to tell you to race to your nearest bike shop and immediately spend all of your money on new tyres though, because your tyre pressure has a huge effect here, and that is completely free to adjust. Also, the most important information and principles I'm about to discuss will apply to rim brake systems too. First, let's discuss what's happening on a fairly basic level. So you and your bike are travelling along a tarmac road, you apply the brakes and they work to slow the rotational speed of the wheel, in this case via brake rotors. The wheel is connected to the road via your tyres, which is the key contact area to generate the friction required to slow you and your bike down. Which means, provided that your brakes can exert enough force to break the traction between the tyre and the road, there's kind of little to no point upgrading your brakes before upgrading your tyres. However, I do want to stress that if your brakes are total garbage, spend some time, effort and money getting your brakes to at least function normally and correctly first before starting to try and optimise anything else. So, if the grip between the tyre and the road surface is the most important factor, what can be done to improve it? Well, we can't exactly change much to do with the surface of the roads we're cycling on, but we can choose where we ride. So avoiding things like painted lines, drain covers, and the very edge of the road surface where it's loose and gritty are the kind of obvious things to do. Now the exciting nerdy part is looking at the aspects of our tyres and tyre setups that can help. Now as I've already mentioned, tyre pressure is very important here because it helps us in two different ways. Number one, using a lower tyre pressure will increase the tyre's contact patch with the road, providing you with more grip. And number two is because that lower tyre pressure allows the tyre casing to deform more easily over small bumps and imperfections in the road, which means more of the tyre is in contact with the road for more of the time, again increasing that contact patch and therefore your grip too. More grip means a greater braking forces can be exerted and if you add all that together it means you slow down at a greater rate. Now we've discussed tyre pressure loads here on GCN Tech, but the advice always remains the same, and that is to use a reputable tyre pressure calculator, input accurate data about you and your tyre setup, and then use that as a starting point. Now from all my years of experience as a professional racer and all-round bike nerd, I typically use a pressure that is 5 to 15 psi lower than what was recommended for when I want to try to maximise grip. But as always, you need to make sure you stay within any pressure limits of products to make sure you're safe. Lower tyre pressures are just one way of increasing a tyre's contact patch with the road. The other way is to quite simply switch to using a tyre that is wider. That's going to increase the contact patch with the road, and the bigger contact patch means more grip, and means you can slow down at a greater rate. Now, with the example that I'm talking about on road bike tyres with their slick tread, the wider the tyre, the better. It does get more complicated when we head off-road and start to talk about tyres with a more aggressive tread pattern, but I'll save that for another day. 
And then the third aspect is rubber compound and the casing construction. Again, this isn't really that complex to understand, but when you're trying to prioritize contact patch and therefore grip, a softer, high performance rubber compound will provide more grip than a harder rubber compound. This is due to its mechanical grip characteristics with the road. Now there is a minor trade off here, and that is that the softer compound, the greater the rate of wear. In terms of the tyre's casing and construction, quite simply a more flexible or supple tyre casing will be able to deform more easily over bumps and imperfections in the road surface, which means there's going to be more tyre in contact with the road for more of the time, therefore increasing the grip even further. Now in the examples that I've spoken about today, these are all prioritising the tyre's characteristics for grip only. It all becomes far more complicated when you start to optimise for other areas too, such as tyre weight, rolling resistance, puncture resistance and longevity too. But finding that perfect balance is the job of the tyre engineers. However, I do want to stress that whilst performance tyres are trying to optimise all of the areas at once, it's simply impossible to have a tyre that is the best at everything. There's always going to be some kind of compromise in some areas and always prioritising certain areas too. But that is the job of the tyre engineers, like I've said. And we've seen the level of tech and research that goes into developing performance tyres when Ollie visited the Pirelli factory a little while back. Now, a large part of finding that perfect balance in terms of tyre characteristics falls to us as consumers. We need to think about what it is we want to prioritise and then search for a product that is out there that aligns with our priorities. Now, this is why there are so many different tyre brands, tyre types, tyre sizes, and of course, pressure options that are out there for us to choose from. And I'm not for one minute saying that you need to rush to the shops and spend all your hard-earned cash on the most expensive tyres out there, but when you do need to replace your tyres, explore the different options that are out there and do some research into the casing types, the tread pattern, the construction of the rubber, and get that tyre pressure right, because it's important to optimise the pressure to make use of the gains that can be had for free. So those are the reasons why I believe tyre optimization should come before brake upgrades. But what about the other limiting factor that I said that most people overlook? Well, unfortunately for that, you need to take a look in the mirror because the way that we apply the brakes and position our body weight on the bikes has a big impact on the effect of our stopping distances too. Now, finding the exact limit for maximal braking force just before the tyre loses traction is something that takes years to master. And also, shifting your body weight back to counteract the rate of deceleration is crucial too. Now, these are things that pro riders will absolutely excel at, but as normal riders, we can all practice and improve too. Your brake setup and the components are still incredibly important though. Disc brakes, for example, here really help, not only with more consistent performance in all different conditions, but by requiring less user input, allowing for a finer control of the braking force going into the bike. Now, larger brake rotors, such as what I've got here, and upgraded brake pads can also play a role, in part by helping us to find and hold that so-called maximum braking force, but also handling higher temperatures and providing stable performance under higher stresses or repeated brake applications, which is actually really important to note here, because a lot of what I have discussed is all about looking at single brake applications, such as if you're stopping in an emergency stop, now, when it comes to prolonged or repeated braking scenarios, the characteristics of the brake components do have a far greater effect. It's for this reason that heavier riders and people who live in hilly areas should use bigger brake rotors that can cope with the heat that's generated. Now, generally speaking, most riders could be okay with 160mm rotors that are fitted onto most road bikes. But I do think there are people out there who could benefit from using the slightly larger 180mm brake rotor on the front of your bike if your fork is suitable and, of course, once you've optimised your tyre setup. 
So, in summary, what is the takeaway message we've got here? Well, if you want to reduce your stopping distances and capabilities as much as possible, the very first thing you need to do is maximize the grip that your tire has with the road. And you can do that through all of the different ways which I've just explained in this video. And then at that stage, you can work on prioritizing and improving your own skills as a rider be that the application of the brake or also the placement of your body weight when trying to slow down as quick as possible. And then once you've got all of those things dialed in, it's at that stage that you can start to look into performance and upgraded brake components to really maximize that area. So, hope you found this video informative and helpful. I certainly had fun making it, and I am keen to hear your thoughts on this. So get involved in the comments section down below. Let me know what kind of brake components and how you set your tires up. And um, well, if you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, and please do consider subscribing to GCN Tech for more exciting and perhaps nerdy bike tech videos. See you later.